everyone and welcome back to Nav Divas. I am so excited to dive into part seven of our ServiceNow complete discovery series, Mastering Network Discovery. So think of this as uh, pulling back the curtain on your entire network. So we are going to explore how ServiceNow, our favorite platform, automatically finds and maps out all your network devices like routers, switches, and firewalls, creating a super detailed inventory. So this isn't just for techie, techies. Understanding this helps everyone see how IT works behind the scenes. So let's get started and demystify your network. So for this video, I have prepared a document for this. And as usual, I will be leaving this on my LinkedIn page. So please feel free to download it. So to kick things off, let's talk about three essential ingredients for successful network discovery. First, we need the MIT server. Imagine the MIT server as ServiceNav's local detective, a small but mighty piece of software that lives inside your company's network. Its job is to go out, gather information from your devices, and securely send it back to your main ServiceNav system. So without this detective, ServiceNav can see what's happening locally. Second, network connectivity is crucial. Our mid server detective needs a clear path to all your network devices. This means making sure firewalls, those digital security guards are configured to allow traffic on specific ports. So think of a port as a specific doors, like UDP port 161 is the door for SNMP request and TCP port 22 is for SSH. If these doors are closed, mid server can't get in. And finally, the credentials. Just like you need a key to unlock the door, ServiceNow needs the right username and passwords to access your network devices. These are stored securely and ServiceNow automatically tries the correct keys to unlock the device information. No proper credentials, no access, no discovery. Now, let's talk about the languages ServiceNow speaks to your network devices. SNMP and SSH. SNMP or Simple Network Management Protocol is like a standardized questionnaire. Most network devices like your office computers, sorry, routers, have a built-in agent that holds a database of information by itself. The mid server acts as a manager sending questions to this agent to get the basic but vital data, like how long the device has been running, its current status, or how busy its CPU. It's great for getting a bold overview. Then there is SSH or a secure shell. While SNMP gives us the standardized data, SSH allows for much deeper conversation. Think of it as a logging directly into the device's brain, just like the network administrator would do. ServiceNav uses SSH to run specific commands, pulling out the detailed configuration files and understanding how devices are connected to each other, getting information that SNMP simply can't provide. It's crucial for building those rich, interconnected maps of your network. So let's dive a little deeper into SNMP. It comes in a different versions, which is SNMP v1 and v2 are simpler uh, and use what's called the community string, basically a plain text password. 
for discovery, we usually just need a read-only string. So the service now can look, but not change anything. The SNMP v3 is a more secure version. It adds encryption and stronger authentication, making sure your data is protected. So then there are OIDs or object identifiers. Imagine your device information on a giant organized tree. An OID is like a unique address or a path that points to a specific leaf on that tree holding a particular piece of information. For example, there is a specific OID that always points to a device's system name. ServiceNow uses this OIDs, especially one called SysObject ID to classify devices. It asks, what's your SysObject ID? The answer tells ServiceNow, if it's a Cisco router, an F5 load balancer, or something else entirely. It's how ServiceNow knows exactly what kind of devices it's talking to. So now ServiceNow actually discovers everything. So it's a four-phase process, almost like a detective's investigation. First, the port scan, also known as a Sajam probe. This is where ServiceNav scans a range of IP address looking for open doors, specifically UDP 161 for SNMP and TCP 22 for SSH. It's like knocking on the every door to see who answers. Once an open door is found, we move to the classification. A classifier probes is launched, which uses SNMP to ask devices, what kind of device are you? It gets the system, sorry, sys object ID we just talked about and matches it against a list in service now to determine if it's a router, a switch, or a firewall. Next is the identification. Now that we know what kind of device it is, the service now needs to figure out if it's a brand new device or if it's already in our CMDB, it fetches unique details like serial numbers or MAC addresses and applies reconciliation rules to see if there is a match. Yes, it prevents the duplicate entries. Finally, we have exploration. This is where the real data gathering happens. ServiceNow launches more probes and patterns using both SNMP and SSH to collect all the detailed attributes. Interface details, running configurations, routing tables, VLANs, and most importantly, how this device connects and relates to all other devices in your network. This is how we build that interconnected map. So when it comes how ServiceNow approaches discovery, there are two main strategies often used together. First is the SNMP. First approach is ideal for broad Quick scan. It's a vendor. It's a vendor friendly, meaning it works with almost any network devices that supports SNMP. It's super fast and efficient for identifying devices and collecting basic and performance metrics. Think of it as a quick roll call to see who is there and if they are healthy. Then we have SSH approach, which is a preferred modern way. Discovery often starts with SNMP to classify the device. This is where the magic of pattern comes in. Patterns are like a detailed script that tells ServiceNow exactly what commands to run via SSH to pull out the deep contextual configuration uh, data. So what exactly does ServiceNow find when it's go doing all this discovery? Pretty much everything that makes up your network. We are talking about the backbone devices like routers, switchers, from a major vendors like Cisco, Juniper. These are the traffic cops of your network. Then there are firewalls from companies like Palo Alto, Checkpoint and Cisco ASA, and these are your network security guards protecting your digital boundaries. Load balancers like five big IP and Citrix NetScalers are also discovered. So they ensure your application runs smoothly by distributing network traffic efficiently. And do not forget wireless APs, your access points, and wireless LAN controllers that manage your Wi-Fi. 
beyond this, ServiceNow can also find uh, other SNMP related, sorry, enable devices like networked printers, UPS systems that provide backup power and various slot devices that are connected to your network. It truly gives you a comprehensive inventory of everything connected. Now let's talk about troubleshooting because Sometimes things don't go perfectly. Your most powerful tool here is a command line utility called SNMP Walk. Imagine SNMP Walk is a, as a direct line to your device's SNMP agent. It performs a series of requests just like a service of discovery does. The key is to run this command from the mid server itself. Why? Because this accurately simulates what ServiceNow is trying to do. For example, you would type something like SNMP to C minus C public, which is nothing but your community string and your IP address or your target IP address as 192.168.1.1. If this command fails or times out, you immediately know the problem isn't the ServiceNow, but rather a fundamental issue like a firewall blocking access or incorrect credentials. So it's a fantastic first step to isolate the problems and whenever required, please collaborate with your network team to troubleshoot these issues. And uh, let's quickly talk about some of the common errors you might encounter and how to fix them. The authentication failure simply means the SNMP community string or SSH credentials you provided are incorrect. The solution is simple. Double check your credentials on the target device and in your service now for any typos and make sure you're using the correct SNMP version. The next is the my favorite no response from device or device timed out. So this points to a network connectivity issue. So the mid server can't even reach the device from the mid server. Try simple ping to a test basic reachability or telnet to see or to test if a specific port is open. You will likely need to work with your network team, as I mentioned earlier, to check the firewalls and the access control lists. Finally, active couldn't classify the most important one. And this, this is interesting because it means a discovery reached the device and it got an SNMP response, but the sys object ID turned out isn't recognized in ServiceNow OID classifiers table. The solution, run an SNMP walk to get the sys object ID, search for it online to identify the device, and then you might need to create a new one, which is SNMP OID. ID classifier entry in ServiceNow for that specific device type. It's like teaching ServiceNow about a new kind of device. So in conclusion, the network discovery is truly a powerful capability that lays the groundwork for a mature IT operations. By correctly setting up your MIT servers, configuring credentials and leveraging protocols like SNMP and SSH, you build and maintain a rich, accurate TMDB. So this accurate data isn't just for the show, it becomes essential foundation for other critical service now capabilities, for example, service mapping, event management, change management, and many others. So to maximize the value of network discovery, here are some key implementation steps and best practices. First, install and validate your mid server connectivity. Make sure it can talk to everything it needs to. Then configure firewall rules to allow SNMP and SSH traffic. Set up and test the credentials for all your network devices types. Create a high P range definitions for systematic discovery. Tell service now where to lock and establish a regular discovery schedule to keep your CMDB up to date. For security, use SNMP v3 wherever possible. Always implement read-only credentials to prevent accidental changes. When starting out, begin with the small IP ranges for initial testing to avoid overwhelming your network. And finally, document any custom OID classifiers you create and schedule discoveries during maintenance windows for busy networks to maintain business impact or minimize impact. Following the steps will set up, sorry, will set you up for success.
So now I will be showing you exactly how this works by scanning a real IP switch in an action. I am scanning a IP switch and as you can see the state is active. So we have already set the credentials in our credential table using a community string. As you can see, an SNMP classification probe has been triggered and let's wait for the input queue. So we did receive a response back from the device that stating that one, two, three, five, so 1,235 OIDs were discovered and a pattern was launched, which is a network switch pattern was launched and the device was actually updated. So as you can see, there were four IP switches which were identified and it is being updated. So you, you saw everything in action, uh, the SEJAM phase, or this is where the scan, port scanning happens, the classification and the identification and the exploration and the device has been updated. And that's a wrap for uh, part seven of our ServiceNow Discovery uh, series. I hope this di deep dive into network discovery was helpful and easy to understand. And if you found this video valuable, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to NowDivas for more insights and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next episode. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.